All right, so now we're going to be talking about spinal trauma. So at the completion of this lesson, the paramedic refresher student should be able to state the component of the nervous system, list the functions of the central nervous system, and define the structure of the, of the skeletal system as it relates to the nervous system, um, relate mechanisms of injury to potential injuries of the uh, spine, and describe the... Um, implication of not properly caring for potential spinal injuries, state um, the signs and symptoms of potential spinal injuries. Describe the method of determining if the responsive patient may have spine injuries, relate the, in the airway emergency or sorry, um, air emergency medical care techniques uh, to the patient with uh, suspected spine injuries, describe how to stabilize the cervical spine, and discuss the indications for si uh, sizing and using a cervical um, immobiliz um, immobilization device, establishing the relationship between airway management and the patients with spinal injuries. Describe a method for sizing a cervical spine, immobil uh, cer or cervical spine immobilization device, and describe how long to roll a patient with a suspected, or how to log roll a patient with a suspected spinal injury. Describe how to secure a patient to a long spine board. List instances where a short board should be used and describe how to Im um, immobilize patients using a short spine board. Describe the indications for the use of a rapid extrication and um, list steps in performing a rapid extrication. State the circumstances in which a helmet should be left on the patient and also discuss the circumstances when a helmet should be removed. Identify the differences um, on types of helmets. Describe the unique characteristics of sports helmets. Explain the preferences, um, the prefer, um, preferred methods for removing a helmet. Discuss alternative methods for removing helmets. Describe how a patient's head is stabilized to remove the helmet, and also different differentiate how to um, how the head is stabilized with the with a helmet compared to without a helmet. <clears throat> uh, effective objectives. Explain the rationale uh, for immobilization of the entire spine when a cervical spine is sus uh, suspected or cervical injury, spine injury is suspected. Explain the rationale for utilizing immobilization methods apart from the the strap on a cot. Explain the rationale for um, uh, for utilizing a short spine immobilization device when, when moving a patient from a sitting position or to a supine position. Explain the rationale for use uh, for utilizing a rapid extrication approach only when they will make the difference between life and death. And def um, defend the reason for leaving helmet in place for transport of a patient and defend the reason for removal of a helmet transport um, a patient. So, uh, spinal injuries uh, to the spine are extremely serious and may lead to uh, may result in several permanent disabilities or deaths if improperly treated or missed in the assessment. For every patient who is involved in in any type of traumatic incidents um, in, in which the mechanical uh, mechanism of injury or or significant our signs and symptoms indicate a possible spinal injury, complete spinal immobilization must be considered. A short backboard or spinal immobilization device may be used on non-critically injured patients at the, uh, the scene prior to movement of the patient. When patients present, uh, present with life-threatening or the scene uh, um, is unsafe for the paramedic, the patient is moved by rapid extrication techniques. Failure to mobilize the spine or treat the head injured uh, the the head in, um, injured patient can potentially lead to increased uh, patient morbidity and mortality. It should be noted that some clinical evidence suggests providers who immobilize may be may cause greater harm to the patient. So allow so always check with, with local protocols. So spinal trauma special or sorry specific mechanisms of injuries for spinal trauma. So we have um, these are different types of injuries we're going to come across. We're going to come across axle loading, 
We're going to come across flexion injuries. We're going to have hyperflexion or hyperextension. We're going to have hyperrotation, lateral bending, and also penetrating wounds. So spinal trauma. So actual transac um, transection um, is going to be of the of the cord is rare, but functional transection is more common, leading to the loss of sensation or function below the level of the uh, of injury. So the primary injury is what caused the injury. A um, a secondary injury is is um, and um, primary injury is what causes the injury. A secondary uh, injury is what occurs from the complex series of events in response to the primary injury, which a lot of times uh, those are usually more damaging. Um, that uh, secondary injury is caused by ischemia, um, by ischemia to the gray or white matter of the. I think what SC is called pi stand for. Basically, uh, whatever you okay, so let me put this in my own words here. So, secondary injuries it usually cause it can cause ischemia to the white or gray matter of the brain, which can lead to hypertension, hypoxia, and hyperthermia um, in the patient. Go away here, let's go out of the room. Come on, come on, Cooper. Sorry about that. My bulldog wanted to come in here and harass me while I'm trying to teach. All right, so actual transaction. Okay, once again, the complete transaction of the cord is very rare, but the signs and symptoms are obvious, which are no motor or sensory function below the level of the injury. Most EMTs and paramedics are unaware that an actual transaction is not the most common um, presentation of the cord injury, that the partial cord injury are far more common um and with less obvious signs and symptoms so here's a a a mri or a x-ray of an actual transection all right so partial or incomplete cord injury is more common but is more vague in presentation because of the undamaged spinal nerves um, track, the patient will not will not pr uh, present with a complete loss of motor function, but instead will present with a partial neurological function, which can be confusing. All right, so partial or, or so uh, you have an anterior cord syndrome, which is all, um, then you have Brown cord uh, syndrome, then you also have dorsal uh, syndrome, and then you have central cord syndrome. So When they talk about the cords, uh, these different cord syndromes, this is what it typically will look like as you're looking from the cord looking down. So the brown sequard uh, syndrome is going to be usually caused by penetrating trauma injured to only one side. Of the, it's going to be hemisection of the cord. Patients will show loss of motor function, um, motor fine touch sensation on the side of the spinal cord injury um, spinal cord injury that uh, that the patient uh, response will be uh, the pain response will be intact on the opposite side of the body the patient will have motor uh, motor fine touch sensation but pain response will be missing so here's an illustration of what it would look like so as you see here as these, so as you see here with the injury to the one side, you're going to have, um, you can have a loss of pain, temperature, and light touch on the opposite side, whereas the side that is affected, you are going to have loss of motor function and vibration, position, and deep touch sensation on the same side as the core damage. All right, so the anterior cord syndrome. Uh, this is usually caused by a, a contusion, pressure, or damage of the anterior spinal cord. Will uh, patient will present with a loss of motor <coughs> pain and temperature sensation below the level of the injury. Patients will retain light touch sensation. Uh, this injury is seen almost exclusively in the elderly. 
So here's an illustration. Um, this is uh, usually um, associated with a cord lesion. And what happens here is the cord becomes damaged. You below the damaged spot, you're going to notice that the patient has going to be loss of motor functions with um, pr uh, preservation of position, um, vibration, and the touch sense. So they'll have full ability to be able to feel the sensations around them. They just won't be able, they're just going to have loss of motor functions. All right, central cord syndrome. This is um, where the where the ligament, um, ligamentum flav flavum impinges to the central portion of the cord, causing a contusion or uh, to the gray matter and inner portion of the spinal nerve tract. Mechanism of injury is hyperextension, uh, flexion, um, or flexion mechanisms. Patients present with a weakness, paralysis, and sensory dysfunction in the upper extremities. Patients' lower extremity have no little neurological impairment. So here's a illustration of the cord damage. As you see here, you're gonna have loss of motor functions. to one area, and then uh, you're going to have incom um, incomplete loss of motor functions in others that are further down the cord, or down the spinal cord line. Dorsal column syndrome. So this is uh, where the injury is called, uh, this is uh, injuries that are caused by infection or tumors. This is a rare condition that is that does not produce severe motor dysfunctions like uh, CS or central cord syndrome. Uh, this is because the posterior central cord carries primary sensa sensory information to the brain. Uh, it does not cause loss of vibration since fine motor coordination, loss of fine touch, and leads to burning or shooting pain, tinging sensation uh, of the skin. The pain and temperature sensation is usually left intact. All right, so a spinal cord injury or spinal spinal shock is usually defined as a temporary loss of neurologic function and autonomic uh, tone distal to the spinal cord injury. This usually occurs within seven to twenty days. Loss of motor or sensory function, loss of bladder and bowel control, bradycardia, hypotension, and hypothermia. The patient presents with a tachycardia, hypotension, cool, clammy skin. Always expect blood loss. Uh, so, cardia um, equina syndrome um, defines as an injury to the nerves at the L2 level where the spinal nerves exit the cardia, uh, which um, the cardia equina. All right, so the syndrome usually causes um, caused by a um, herniated, herniated disc in the lower thoracic lumbar area, which puts pressure against the spinal cord. Um, usually, your symptoms are going to be weakness of lower of the lower muscles, depending on which nerve root is injured. Muscle reflex, hyperamnesia, and later amnesia. Um, to or sorry, and and anesthesia to the in the groin incontinence and also sexual dysfunction all right so it says here there should be a mass at the level of the l3 l4 it is isotense relative and to the vertebrae discs l5 is the is sacralized let's move on so the trauma damage uh, nerve. So when we're doing peripheral nerve damage um, or injury, so the trauma damage a nerve or nerve groups between a the the ganglion um, and its in an intervention point. So the damage causes muscles to muscle to to section of the muscle not to function properly. Damage can also cause sensation uh, on the skin to be lost. 
so uh, assessment considerations. What are the, could be the causes? So is it be possible fracture caused by impin, impinging or damage to the nerve? Laceration involving nerve pathways, involving the nerve pathways, penetrating trauma. Um, is it gonna be due to pressure, pressure, which is gonna be usually weight against the nerve pathways? Um, special treatment considerations will be in addition to full immobilization. Immobilization um, in the anatomic position, reduced swelling with the with ice application. 